The Antelope Wife, 1998-2012, by Louise Erdrich, is a novel steeped in magical realism. It earned the 1999 World Fantasy Award. In 2012, Erdrich released an updated edition featuring new cover art, interviews, and additional content, including extra chapters. This edition restores previously omitted characters and storylines and corrects notable errors from the original text. The novel spans multiple generations, tracing the intertwining fates of the Roy and Shawano families. Erdrich employs a non-linear narrative, blending time and the voices of a diverse cast to highlight how the past perpetually haunts the present. Although the intricate plot and character connections can be confusing, a family tree in the front matter helps clarify relationships. The novel begins with a cryptic folktale about twin sisters sowing the world into existence, each trying to outdo the other. This folktale is divided into four parts, Bejig, Nish, Niswi, and Niwin, and each section of the novel includes a piece of the tale, emphasizing the sisters' rivalry. This motif of twin sisters and the imagery of women sewing or stitching beadwork recur throughout the book. The first part, Bejig, details the origins of the family's intersection. Scranton Roy, the son of a Quaker, enlists in the military and heads west. During a tragic misunderstanding, an Indian village is attacked, and Roy kills an old woman. Horrified, he flees and rescues a baby strapped to a dog, raising her as his own and naming her Mathilda. When Mathilda is ten, her grieving mother, Blue Prairie Woman, finds and retrieves her but dies of a fever before reaching home. Mathilda is then adopted by a herd of antelope and vanishes with them. Years later, Roy and his son, August, return to the site of the old woman's death. There, they meet her twin grandnieces, who forgive Roy. He eventually takes his own life, but August stays, marrying one of the twins, though he suspects he married both, as he can't tell them apart. Together, they have four children, three sons and a daughter. The sons fight in World War I and all return home. The second part, Niche, shifts to the modern day, narrated by a magical entity known as the Windigoo Dog. This narrator reveals the fates of August's descendants, focusing on August's irresponsible grandson, Klaus. The Windigoo Dog occasionally allows Klaus to break into the narrative and share his perspective, acknowledging Klaus as, unfortunately, and to his own shame, best qualified to tell what happened next. Klaus, a powwow trader, becomes captivated by the four elusive and beautiful antelope women, descendants of Mathilda Roy, who attend the powwow. Despite warnings to leave the antelope women alone, Klaus abducts one and takes her to Minneapolis. The woman, known as Sweetheart Calico, is always mute. Although she occasionally escapes, she always returns due to having nowhere else to go. People sense something strange about Sweetheart Calico, noting that her footprints resemble hoofprints. Eventually, Klaus and his friend Richard Whiteheart Beads, fearing legal trouble for illegal carpet stashing, go on the run, leaving behind Richard's wife Rosen, Rosen's twin daughters, and Sweetheart Calico. Grandmas Newton and Gizis, also twins, visit Rosen, and after an outing with the twins, Sweetheart Calico goes missing. Part 3, Niswi recounts the births of Rosen's twins, Callie and Deanna. The twins lacked traditional Ojibwe names because Rosen rejected the names chosen by Newton and Gizis, Blue Prairie Woman, and a name suggested by a dream visit from Scranton Roy, due to their heavy, tragic histories. In the present, the lack of a naming ceremony causes problems for the twins, who frequently wander away from home and fall ill. Sweetheart Calico becomes increasingly malevolent, and the twins sense that she is trying to kidnap them into her world, realizing she is not human. Although Sweetheart Calico still lives in Rosin's house, her behavior grows increasingly uncanny. Rosin finds a letter addressed to Klaus, urging him to return Sweetheart Calico because her daughters are angry and causing havoc in town. In Part 4, Niwin, Callie and Deanna ask their grandmothers about the missed naming ceremony and request their names. Gizis names Deanna, recounting a dream about one of their ancestors the old woman killed by a young soldier long ago. The soldier had shot at children and she attacked him with a rock. He fatally wounded her, but she saw her granddaughter being saved by the dog. She had given the child her own name and cursed the soldier with it, haunting him until he carved it into his arm and later killed himself. The name was Everlasting Rainbow, symbolizing the bridge between our world and the other. 
Newton shares a story about seeing beautiful blue beads that she desired but knew could never be bought. In a dream, Blue Prairie Woman, the owner of the beads, came to her, and they gambled for the beads. When Newton won, she also won the name. Newton bestows this name on Callie, telling her she must bargain with Sweetheart Calico for the beads. Sweetheart's price is her freedom. Klaus gives her up, along with his own addictions, and she returns home. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe. Thank you.